Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Theology Thursdays. Uh, we are excited that you have joined us for uh, this series. Again, I am Reverend Landon Adams, Director for the Maturity Department at the New Salem Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, for our guest this week, we have Reverend Dr. Merlin Ruffin, who is our Director of Magnification. Uh, she's going to be talking with us uh, again in this series about why theology is important, and particularly the theology of music and worship. Uh, Dr. Ruffin, good to have you on this uh, today with us. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself for uh, folks at New Salem who may not know you well uh, and folks who might be joining us in our virtual uh, audience. Okay, sure. So uh, again, I am Rowan Ruffin. Um, I've been a member of New Salem since 1993. I've been on staff full time since 1999. Right. Uh, again, serving as the director of magnification, which in a lot of other circles might be the worship pastor, if you will. Yeah. Um, raised in the church, uh, daughter of a pastor, again, ra raised in the church with my siblings. Uh, we sang together as, as children. In fact, we still sing together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just um, not at all um, stranger to the whole um, um, church idea, um, no, no church ease, no church language. Um, and, and in fact, that's some of what got me in trouble in my, in my early years, if you will. Um, but at this point in my mature life, uh, both uh, spiritually and, and chronologically, <laughs> uh, God has just allowed me to stay around a little while longer because I believe that he yet has something for me to do. Amen. Amen. And since you have come on uh, at New Salem as a director of magnification, um, would you say that you had uh, an identity as a minister at that point or accepting a calling or talk to us a little bit about when you came on board those uh, few years ago? <laughs> when I came on board, um, Actually, both things happened pretty much simultaneously. I was wrestling with a preaching a ministry call um, and in, interested in and subsequently ended up in a, uh, finding full-time employment at the church. But it was something that uh, happened for me um, later in life, if you will. I consider myself a, a late bloomer. I was <laughs> in my 40s when I... I won't say that that's when the call came, but that's when I finally acknowledged it. And even at that point, I tried everything to get out of it. I remember um, bargaining with God, saying <laughs> that I would, um, you know, I would just do what he asked me to do, but I didn't need, need to make any kind of announcement, no kind of proclamation. <laughs> just, you know, just when you want me to speak someplace, I'll just say I'm speaking someplace. Yeah. Well, um, he, he was not having that. And uh, finally, I gave in uh, because he tends to win anyway. Indeed, indeed. Well, as again, this series is about theology and what it means for us to use our mind or engage our intellect with our faith. Could you talk a little bit about, so as someone who grew up in church um, and then decided to accept God's call to work kind of full time in ministry, when did you experience uh, the reality or the truth that God um, and your relationship? uh with god was something that you could use your mind you could think um about what you were learning in church what you were reading in the scriptures uh, what you were singing about how your life was playing out and to be able to kind of put all those pieces together to be thoughtful about what your faith was was that something you always grew up uh kind of in your church experience or was there a, a point where you came to identify that this that your mind was a thing that god wanted you to use in your in your in your faith life and in your work life of faith actually those things came together for me again i'm a late bloomer so probably in my early 30s shortly after we had joined new salem actually um again grew up in the church i knew the stuff to do i became a very religious person mm. i knew when to raise my hands i knew when to um you know the again the church um language I learned all those things and I could do them and do them well on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But Monday through Saturday, um, lived no kind of life um, 
that was indicative of having, you know, this this guy in my life. I, I just knew of him, but I did not have relationship with him. So again, it was in, in my early 30s that um, that concept, which had been foreign to me, came alive. Yeah. I'm like, th- th- this is a God that, that really loves me and he wants to be in relationship with me. And then I began to struggle with all the things that I had done, all the things that I had been, except you know, a, a consistent follower of Christ. So it was at that point that I really began to dig in and find out more about this guy that I had been giving lip, lip service to for 30 some years. Yeah, yeah. Well, beautiful. Um, and in that time, uh, you have gone, as we speak about using our mind, uh, to earn a few degrees. <laughs> Can you talk to us about your, uh, your educational journey uh, in your work life and how that is translated into your own faith life and work of ministry? Sure, sure. So again, I keep saying I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> um, I was a college uh, dropout, um, went to Denison University, which is just a few miles um, yeah. here. Uh, went for about a year and a half and decided, eh, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> Again, and, and those kinds of decisions were indicative of where I was in my faith walk, yeah. which was hardly there at all. Um, so I, 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 I dropped out of school, um, ended up you know, just in, in my wilderness state until about <laughs> age 40. And I decided I'm going to get my degree. So I did go back and got an undergrad degree from Capital University in uh, communications. And it, and it was just like, just a major accomplishment, again, around age 40. Um, several years after that, I decided that I did really want to study um, and learn again more about God and his word in an yeah. academic setting. So I did um, an MDiv at Newburgh Theological Seminary in Indiana. Um, and that, that's cool. You know, I'm, I'm not really, I won't say I'm not a, into academics, but I yeah. figured two degrees, eh, that's enough. <laughs> what really impressed upon me to go back and do the doctorate. I was at a local event um, uh, for um, associate ministers here in town, and uh, I had been thinking about it and praying about it. And this particular day they had some people come there from seminaries making appeals for people to go back to school and, and yeah. so forth. So of course I thought about it again. So God was just <laughs> still kind of giving me that little, uh, you know, po- that little hope. Um, then we, we broke for a meal for lunch or whatever. And the gentleman that was presenting from United was right behind me in line. <laughs> like, okay, God, all right. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Um, so more, it was at more that more time that I, you. Yeah, <laughs> that I did decide to uh, go to United Theological Seminary in Dayton. I was really excited about the program because for me, for the first time, I could really delve into um, something that I was really, really interested in. Ended up doing a doctorate and my focus was on the effectiveness of music ministry when spiritual disciplines and business practices are combined. Um, and it's been, it's just been such a blessing. And, and I knew one of the reasons that, that God wanted me to do that was that there were going to be doors open that I needed that kind of credential to walk through. Yeah. And he has certainly, um, he, I, I've just seen him do that. And, and open doors, uh, as the word says, that no man can shut. So. No, amen, amen. Well, we have heard from a couple of our guests uh, when Pastor Troy opened our series, uh, talking about really what the importance of theology at the local church, uh, why it's so important. And I think it's just like you said, in your own experience, it's where you got to really bridge what you knew about God and what you knew about what um, life in the church looked like, what it meant to be faithful, but then to really put it into action in your own life. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure there were times that you had to wrestle with God about certain questions or experiences or what God was calling you to do. Um, as you lead um, our magnification department, uh, and particularly in this conversation, the uh, music department, 
Can you talk about the importance of theology uh, in music, be that the kind of old standard hymns or some of the more contemporary gospel music that we see today? Um, why do you think, um, and, and, and again, given your academic experience to, to hone your own knowledge, as you lead a department, what, what's important about theology and the music department? I, I believe that music in the context of, of church setting, uh, music ministry, should in fact um, reflect our theology. For example, hymn, a hymn that says, um, yes, God is real. Again, that, that teaches us uh, about who God is, the character of God. So it, it uh, affirms our faith, but then it also is a witness for others, unbelievers that may come into the setting. So again, hymns like, yes, God is real. Um, of course, I'm drawing a blank right now, but that, <laughs> that's a major function, I believe, of hymns. Yeah. And I believe should be the function of some of the more contemporary songs like um, God is good, um, God is able, you've been so faithful. Yeah. Um, so for me, the, the, the music that is selected for presentation in the church setting has to align with the word of God. Yeah. Doesn't have to be verbatim from the scripture, but the concept should be in the word of God. For example, something like Total Praise by Richard Smallwood. You don't find those exact words. You don't find that verbiage in scripture, but the scriptures are uh, full of uh, information about how to praise God, how to give him your all in, in praise and worship. So for me, that's, that's a non-negotiable. There have been um, songs that have been be become popular um, in terms of our uh, music ministry that I, I, I just don't see the connection. Um, mm. no, no shade on any of the artists, but yeah. I just don't see something <laughs> like a Melodies from Heaven. Kurt Franklin was popular years ago. I'm just not sure how that aligns with scripture. Um, there's one that we did, I think our male chorus did, called uh, Clean Up What I Messed Up. Um, you know, catchy tune, but again, I'm just not sure how it aligns with, with scripture. So I just think um, it's incumbent upon us as music ministers to carefully and wisely choose what we say because it's reflective of what we think about God and who God is. No, that's good. I mean, it's it's also interesting to think, uh, you know, as you as you wear the two hats as preacher uh, and director of magnification, that sometimes what gets said from the choir stand can be more, not necessarily impactful, but sometimes more lasting. Uh, just just from a kind of learn standpoint like it's sung there's a rhythm to it there's a beat there's a tune a melody it might be something that is much easier for the congregate to hear and carry with them even then sometimes the sermon um, people might leave out of the sanctuary singing the song rather than sort of quoting parts of the sermon uh, so how important that is and then just in our culture how a soundtrack, if you will, can really undergird our thoughts, our attitudes, our perspectives, um, our approaches to things. Um, can you um, can you think of a time um, where the where the theology of the song has come back either to you or you've heard from uh, again members of the congregation or people who have experienced the music ministry who said like, you know, I hadn't thought of God like that before. I didn't know what I was going to do. And this song or this experience, this concert, this worship opportunity, like really helped me hear from God. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, there have been countless times where, and, and more often than not, that people may have been struggling with whatever, and the song spoke to their whatever, whatever they were going through at the time. Um, you know, I mentioned that song, the music ministry, the song should be reflective of what we think about God, but I think the, the impact of music goes beyond that. You know, it should be encouraging to people. It should be affirming to, 
to people. Um, sometimes people get an answer that they've been, something they've been praying about and God speaks through the song. So it's, it's a multifaceted, um, just, just such a powerful force when utilized correctly. Amen. Amen. Yeah, My own uh, call to ministry actually came at a uh, gospel concert at the church I was attending in college. And uh, the musician was Terry Collins and the song was Take the City. And it was just a kind of very proverbial, you know, take back what this devil stole from you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, reclaiming the community, the people of God. And as the song began, I heard very clearly God say, sit down. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was up and jamming and being active and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and as my call sort of unfolded, that's what I've always been able to understand and narrate my call to ministry is to take back the city and the things in our community, in our world that have really been taken from the enemy, um, kind of perverted the good for the bad. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting in this conversation to, to, to reflect on my own calling to ministry rooted in the messaging and the real theology of what God is calling us to do uh, as believers and ministers of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you raise the fact that I am both preacher and um, worship leader, person, whatever I am. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I, I, I wrestled with how the two um, would come together, I guess, initially. And God spoke to me in a dream. I was in a clergy robe, but I was not in the pulpit. Mm. I was on the floor leading a time of singing, a time of worship. Um, and, and I know, and Pastor Troy and I have had this conversation many times that for a lot of the people that are in music ministry, in magnification, you know, I am, I am the person that shepherds them. Mm -hmm. I, I have a closer um, relationship with them because I see them more often and I have a, um, there's just a, a, um, a closer tie between me and them as opposed to Pastor Troy and them. Um, so as the years have gone on, it just became really clear why God did what he did. Um, so I have no doubt that his, his way was just the, the perfect way to accomplish that. That's right, that's right. And, and really, truth be told, in the music moment, uh, you know, not necessarily as the solos, but even as the leader of the choir, like you are the person responsible for carrying the word of God and the message of God to the people in song. So in that way, you are also like uh, the, the singing preacher, <laughs> the, the musical pastor <laughs> uh, preacher in that moment. Absolutely. Do you have, you, you mentioned a little while ago about the hymns and uh, I'm a old church kid that grew up holding the hymn book and singing all four or five verses of the hymn. And several years ago at New Salem, we moved to a pattern where we had a hymn of the month. Mm -hmm. um, so we would mm -hmm. sing the same hymn for mm -hmm. four weeks. Um, and really as an effort, so we did not lose the gift of the hymns in a church. Um, and in a newer generation of churchgoers who were not actively singing three hymns a, you know, a Sunday or what have you. So there's not really a lot of memorization of the hymns that that still experience begins to happen or continues to happen or I think it's beautiful. Um, do you have a favorite hymn of yours that you love particularly or speaks now, to you? <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to share that, but I, I went totally blank when I tried to think of him just a couple of seconds. Probably <laughs> one of my favorite is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Amen. Again, talks about the, the theology of what we believe about God, that he is in fact faithful. Um, just the words of that song, the um, morning by morning, just the, the, the unceasingness, if that's a word, of God's faithfulness is the main, the main theme of that, that song, and I just love it. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, any favorite uh, theological topics for you? This is always my parting question for our guests, uh, theological word or phrase or uh, thing that 
that gets your get your religious calling going? <laughs> well, I strongly believe that um, effective music ministry is a vehicle for worship, a vehicle for worship, and I believe that worship is and should be a lifestyle. So, music ministry is just one component of that which I believe is required. Um, for a worshiper to have in their arsenal, if you will. Amen. Amen. I would say worship, worship as a lifestyle is, is probably my uh, my mantra. All right, very good. Well, Dr. Ruffin, we are excited to have you at the helm of our magnification department. Uh, you are a strong leader, a gracious leader, uh, and surely one that is faithful to the call. Uh, that God has given you. So we appreciate you coming on to be with us today to talk about the theology of music ministry and the importance of theology uh, in our worship. Uh, if you are uh, not in our New Salem family, we would invite you if you've got an open slot on Sundays at 11 uh, to join us for our virtual worship. Uh, but we hope you are staying safe and healthy wherever you are. And again, appreciate you joining us today for Theology Thursday. We Thank hope to so see much. you next week. It was great to be with you. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, everybody, and God bless.